Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use transparent images in Blender 2.8. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. And the first thing we'll do like usual is just click general here. We've got a general scene. If you've not used Blender before then you can check the link in the YouTube description for some beginner tutorials. And I'm going to go to file save as and I'm going to give this file, I've got a folder on my desktop, I'm just going to call this transparent uh, images-01 so just give your name, your file a name, save it here and the first thing we'll do is delete this cube, so let's get rid of the cube and then we need to download a few images so we'll open up our web browser and we'll go to this website here and We'll download this picture here. It's already a transparent PNG, so that just saves us some time. Uh, let's just click download. We'll open up the folder here. You can see the file we just saved. We'll go to file, uh, right click here, create a new folder, and we'll call it images. And we'll just drag this image into here. And then maybe we'll use one other picture. Let's see, maybe. Let's use this picture here, so we'll right click, we'll click here and download this one as well. So it's just a basic tutorial, so we just whiz through this quite quickly. So inside this scene, we want to add the image, but before we do that, we'll go to Edit Preferences here, and then we'll go to Add-ons here, and we'll click on Import Export, and then we need to make sure that the let's see this option here, you need to tick it off import export, import images as planes, make sure that's ticked off and then click save preferences here. Then you can close down this preferences, click shift A to insert an image and you want to insert image as plane here. And then we'll go to the folder and we'll click on that first picture and we'll import it. And you can see the images as a plane now and we'll click on render view here so we can see it in the render view. And really we just want to scale this image so let's click on it and we'll press S to scale and we'll scale it up, let's say to about four, four and a half, something like this. Let's go to about five. So I've scaled it up to around five here. So you can see the picture here. And let's just drag it up. So let's click on the move tool and drag it above the floor for now. So there's the picture. And now we just want to make it a transparent image. To do that, let's just click here and make sure that the image is selected, this one here, and we'll go to the materials and everything is set up for you here, all you need to do is click alpha blend here. So under blend mode, select alpha blend and you just rotate your camera a little bit or rotate your viewport and you'll see the image is now transparent. So that's pretty much it, that's how you create or use a PNG file within Blender uh, to create a transparent image, we can press F12 Really, the camera is not in a very good place, so let's just press Control, Alt, and Zero, and uh, let's just move that camera quickly. So we just drag the camera up here, and we can render. We see that the image is now transparent. So that's pretty much this tutorial done. But I think we can do a little bit more work in here. So if all you wanted to find out was how to use transparent images or PNGs in Blender, then we're pretty much done. But if you want to continue, we'll make something out of this. Maybe we'll do a little scene, a little animation, have a little bit of fun, right? So the first thing we want to do is press Shift A and we want to insert a plane. So we've got this plane down here. And let's scale that up. So we press S to scale and we want to scale it on the, let's say we want to scale it by around 20, 2, 0. So just press S to scale and then 2, 0. And that will scale it up by 20. And then we want to create a little backdrop here, right? So to do that, let's go to our edit mode here. And we'll click edge select here. And we'll select this top edge right here. And we want to extrude it vertically. So press E to extrude. And then we'll press uh, Z to extrude it on the vertical axis, and we're going to extrude it by 30, 3, 0. So now you can see there's this backdrop here like this, and we'll click on this edge here. So we'll click on this edge again, and we'll press Control B to make a bevel. We'll bevel it out to something like this, and then before we left click, we want to roll the mouse upwards to create segments. 
like this then we can left click then we can go back to object mode and we can go to object and smooth shade now it's nice and smooth so we've got a little backdrop here with the person in the middle and let's um let's uh let's see what we're going to do here let's have a look so really we want this image to be touching the floor right because right now it's kind of sitting above the floor so let's press number three number three takes us into the right orthographic and we'll click on the picture of the woman and we'll drag it down but we need to rotate it so this hand is touching this like almost like this green line here so let's let's go to the uh, let's see let's click on this picture here we'll go to the object data and we want to rotate it not this axis we want to rotate it we want to rotate on the y axis so we want to rotate it something like this here like 3.7 and then drag it down so like the hand maybe we'll rotate it back a little bit more this way something like this we just want this hand and the leg to be touching the can or the floor really right doesn't have to be really super accurate but something like this okay so let's click on this stage let's go to the plane here click plane let's double click on it and call it floor let's click on this one here double click and call it uh, person We'll click on the floor, let's go to the material, let's add a new material, and you can make it any color you want. I'm going to try and make it like this sort of gold color, pick any color you like, doesn't really matter too much. Um, then we want to animate this slightly, right? So let's press zero. Zero will take us to the camera view. So this is what the camera can see right now. We'll press N on our keyboard, and that opens up this transform, and we want to lock the camera to the view. So lock it to the view and then click on the camera up here. And we want to work out. So we're going to use the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. In fact, really, we need to make this stage a bit wider, I think, because when we rotate, we're going to end up seeing some of this gray background. So let's click on the stage quickly. Let's just zoom out a little bit here. We'll click on this stage. We should really undo this. So untick lock camera to viewport and we will press s to scale and then scale it on x the x-axis so we want to scale it not that way we want to press uh, let's have a look here let's press n let's just go back to the viewport so click here and then we want to scale it on the y-axis so press s to scale and then y and scale it out on the width here something like this just want to make it a wider stage. Now we can go back into the camera view, see what the camera sees, and when we rotate the camera, it won't really see these edges around here. So let's click on the camera, click on the camera view, press N again, and then we want to, where is it gone here? Uh, transform here, and lock camera to view. Then we can rotate it around a little bit. Just try and get the camera roughly where you want the, where, where you want it on the picture. So let's say this is our start frame. We'll press the record button, and we'll press I to insert a location, rotation, and scale for the camera. Then we'll move to something like frame 120, and then we'll just middle mouse click and rotate. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit to somewhere like here. And now our camera is doing the animation, right? So let's go back to the first frame. This is probably okay on the first frame, but when we get to the last frame, we want to rotate this picture. So let's go back to the first frame and we'll click on the picture of the woman here. And we can turn off the lock camera here. Let's turn that off and we can press N to close down the transform tool. We've clicked on the picture of the woman, so make sure person is selected. And we'll go back to the uh, object data here and we'll press I to insert a location rotation and scale and then we'll move to the frame 120 that's the last frame and we just want to rotate this a little bit so in here we want to rotate it on the z-axis 
it just rotates and faces the camera to something like this. We'll untick the record button and then we can see, uh, let's have a look here, probably on this first frame, uh, let's click the record button again and on the first frame let's rotate it as well a little bit, let's rotate it this way. something like this this should be okay then we can um, click on the picture of the person untick the record button and we can go into the materials here and we can let's see set hashed here when we set hashed here for the tra uh, transparent shadows we can go to the render and tick off the screen space reflections and then you'll see that you've got a reflect or well, you've got a shadow of this woman even though it's a transparent square image it's only showing the shadow of the actual silhouette here right in the background so that's pretty cool blender can do that that's quite interesting that you can do that okay so we'll probably click on this light source and go to the light here click on this light source and turn it to a sunlight and we'll turn down the energy so something like this and then we can click on the floor and go to the floor material and we can turn up the metallic the more metallic you give the less of the shadow you're going to see right so we don't want to turn it all the way up because we want to keep some of that shadow there okay that's that done so we're on frame 120. So we might as well set the end frame here to 120. And then we had this flower thing, right? So let's try and do something that maybe the flower will pop out of the ground or something. I don't know. It's just a little bit of fun. So let's um, press Shift A and we'll insert another image, image as plane. And we'll click on the plant and we'll import that. And now we can see that plant here, but we need to drag it to the side and drag it up a little bit. And it's actually, it looks like it's actually upside down, right? So we need to rotate it around. So let's click on the plant here. Let's just name it plant. And then go to the object data here. And we want to rotate it. So we want to rotate it on the Y axis. We want to rotate it 180 degrees. So now it's facing the correct direction. Uh, let's press S to scale it a little bit. So we scale it up a little bit to something like this size and let's just drag it so that it's sitting like here you see these two leaves at the bottom we want them to be in the ground like this something like this then let's click on the material and we'll set it to alpha blend and then we'll also set the transparent shadow to hashed and now that will cast its own shadow as well you can see they're both casting shadows. We'll press zero to go back into the camera view and zoom out a little bit. Then really what we want to do, let's just uh, let's just click on the floor for a second. So we've got this plant here. Let's go to the record button and we'll press, we'll click on the plant. So make sure the plant is selected. We've got the record button, we're on the first frame. We'll press I to insert a location, rotation and scale. Then we'll move all the way to frame 120 and then press I to insert a location, rotation and scale as well for the plant. Then let's move back to the first frame and we'll drag the plant so that it's below the ground. And then when we move forward, it should pop up right from the ground like this. something like this it should be okay I guess okay so let's uh, press control s to save and then you could have found loads of other plant PNG files and you could have loads of them popping up all around this this person right loads of different plant images all these different plants and stuff and you can do all sorts right so let's press f12 and see what the last render looks like and that's what it's going to look like with this plant popping up it's kind of got a shadow casted on it because it's underneath this water it kind of looks good actually so let's just leave it like that 
Um, so I think we're almost done now. Let's go file save. We're on 120 frames. Let's untick the record button. Remember to untick it, right, when you finish using it. And I think that's going to do for now. So you can experiment and play around with this and do all sorts of stuff with this now, right? It's all down to you, really, what you want to do. I'm just going to render this out and see what it looks like, the end result. So let's just go to File, Save. We might give it a little bit more light. So let's click the light source. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Something like this. And then the one thing we can do actually is go to the render settings here. Let's set the viewport samples to 120 and let's set the render samples here to 120. Let's press F12 and just render out this one frame. That's what the one frame looks like. That looks all good. Let's go to file, save. Let's go back to the first frame and we'll go to our output settings here. We'll set it to 30 frames a second. We'll click on this directory. In fact, before we do that, let's set it to AVI JPEG and let's set it to RGB and we set it at 100% compression or zero compression. And then um, we'll go back to the desktop and inside here we'll save the file. So let's just save it here and just make sure 100% is set here. It'll be a slightly larger file, but it'll be fine. And I'm going to go to render and render animation or just press Control and F12. So it's going to start rendering out all the frames. This is going to take a little bit of time, maybe five minutes or so. So I'll pause the video and we'll come back and check what it looks like at the end. Okay, Blender's finished rendering out the animation. It's done all 120 frames. Uh, so let's close this. Let's go to File, Save, and we'll close down Blender. We can go into this folder and we've got this AVI file now. We can open that and then we can see the final animation. Let's just set it on looping. Check it a few times, repeat. And it's done a pretty good job. Uh, it's basic animation, but I like the way that the PNG can actually cast the shadow. Um, that's quite interesting. Blender can do that. And even the shadow shows when the plant pops up. So this, even this shadow has been casted here as well. So that's just a basic example of using PNG files in Blender. Uh, by no means was it an amazing animation, but the goal of this tutorial was showing you how to use those transparent PNGs. So that could be your company logo, that could be a photograph or people that you know, it can be anything that you want it to be, right? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.